So if I absolutely was clueless, I was just telling this to my algebra one class, if I'm absolutely clueless about what a graph is supposed to look like, as long as I understand that this thing is a function, I am good to go. I can graph this thing. I can make a reasonable graph of what this is supposed to look like. Um, beyond that, we were algebra two students. We've been working with exponential functions and their graphs. So we do know some key things uh, that we, we need to show on the graph. Like part of the graph, part of the exponential graph, is that it, it, it tends towards being horizontal on one side or the other, depending on if it's decay or, or growth. <coughs> Um, but let's let's start right now thinking like, like pretending that we don't know hardly anything at all about these functions and their graphs. Right? Just like start with that. Um, so if I, if I want to graph, all I have to do is put in something for x, find out what comes out for y, that's a point, I plot that point. Right? Um, See what that would look like. Well, I put stuff in for x. That means I'm going to put something right there. Okay. Now the whole the chart and everything that I typically write up here is based on some uh, some knowledge that we we built over time. Okay. Well, let's pretend we don't have that knowledge and we just throw stuff in there. Uh, let's say I want to put in. Um, like uh, uh, one, just put one there. Okay, so is one good? Let's, let's find out. We got four to the one minus two plus one. That's what plot y. Why do this? Y is four to the negative one plus one plus four to the negative one. One fourth is just a reciprocal. A negative exponent means the reciprocal. So it's one fourth to the first, which is one fourth plus one. So one and a uh, fourth, one and one fourth, or five fourths. So uh, I'm going to need to keep track of this. I could just drop a little table right here, x, y. I put in one, and I got out five fourths. Well, I'm going to need more points than that because I'm absolutely clueless about what this graph is supposed to look like. So that's done, that's done. This will be different. And uh, this will be different. What should I put in for x? I already put in 1, 2. How about 2? Two? 2, 2 minus 2, that's 0. What's 4 to the 0? 1, just anything to the 0 is 1. 2, and I get 2. That's great. So I put in 2, get out 2. Let's say I just want to go way out here, like I'll put in 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Now, 4 seems like a pretty harmless number, right? 4 is not that big. What's 4 to the 4th? 256. Did you just memorize that? Easy as 16 times 16. 256 plus 1 is 250. 257. Well, let's put in 6. I got out 257. Now that's, that's valid. I could graph it. Why would I probably not graph that point? It's a pretty big number. And I, you know, my graph paper's not that big. Or if I try to make it fit on this paper, like 257 is so high, how am I going to show numbers like 5 fourths where I have 257? graph down there, right? It was too big. So maybe six was too big, too much. I don't want to put six in there. I want to keep closer to one and two seemed good. Maybe three, maybe zero. Okay. Um, so so far I have like two points that seem 
viable to graph. Uh, let's put three, three there. Three minus two is one. Four to the one is four. Well, I've got three points. Three points is a good place to start if I'm pretending I'm clueless about this graph. One comma five fourths. So that's one, two, three, four fourths. This would be eight fourths. So four fourths, five fourths. One and one fourth. Um, two comma two. Three comma five. Two, three. This part looks like this. Uh, I know that if I go all the way out to six, then I'm gonna have to take it all the way up to 257. So that means this thing is gonna have to start getting steep really fast, right? So I'm just gonna let it go like that. Maybe if I keep shooting up there, curving up a little by little, that uh, I will hit 257 by the time I get X is six. All right. But Again, pretending that I don't know anything about what this graph is supposed to look like, I don't really know what's going to happen as I go over here. Should I come like this? Should I go like this? Should I come back up? But let's pretend that we don't. Um, So you're going to put in some values that are that way. So how about like a zero? A zero. Zero. Zero minus two is four to the negative two. It's four to the negative two. What's that? Four to the negative two. It's one fourth squared, right? The negative, we just take the reciprocal of that number and then we raise it to the positive, right? Yeah. One fourth times one fourth is one over 16. One over 16 plus one. Uh, we're gonna do one and a sixteenth, or uh, how many sixteenths would that be if we add those together? <coughs> Seventeen sixteenths. Sixteen sixteenths is one plus one more is seventeen sixteenths. So we put in zero and got out seventeen sixteenths or one and a sixteenth. Zero, one and one sixteenth. I don't even know if there are enough pixels in there to divide that area into sixteen pieces. <coughs> okay. Now if I start to make conclusions about numbers like x values that are more and more negative. If I put numbers that are more, ne more negative, I'm just going to get a, like a big negative exponent. The negative part is just going to mean the reciprocal. I'm going to take that reciprocal to whatever power I get. And the more negative my x is, the bigger this power will be, the smaller this fraction will be, and the smaller and smaller I will be up from 1. Right? Make sense? The more negative a number I put in here, the more negative this number is, the smaller this number will be, the more and more and more minutely I will be just barely above 1. So I can conclude that I'll always be above 1. So I'll put that line right there to guide me, literally a guideline, to keep me from going further down. Try to keep going down as we as we draw to the left, but it's gonna so it tends to start looking horizontal. All right, kind of a long process because I was pretending like I didn't know anything about this graph, but I want you to to really get that we work so much with functions. If we can realize all functions are the same kind of thing, we put something in for x and we get something out for y. If you can remember that then we've got a grasp on like 50% of it. The rest of it is, if there's little tricks and, and shortcuts, uh, things like I know one side should look a little horizontal, then that's an important piece of information. Um, and 
knowing that this can be interpreted as a shift to the right two, and this is a shift up one, that can be helpful too. It's really more helpful as a guideline. I was just taking a practice test, uh, of the, like the kind of standardized test that we're going to be taking. And uh, it said, here is a graph of x squared. And it said, here is a graph of y equals x squared. Let me get thick so I can grab it, move it around. So if that's uh, x squared, then I want you to actually physically grab that graph and move it around to show what x minus 2 squared plus 5 is. So using our, our knowledge of shifting right and left and up and down, where will this graph be compared to your basic y equals x squared graph? Up 5. What's that? Up 5. Up 5. Plus 5 is going to be up 5. So we have to look at the grid and see where up 5 is. It's up five and right. to the right two, so then we'll have to find two. It's like right there. Knowing that is, is a, a helpful thing. Uh, you know, it's math is a lot about patterns and recognizing patterns is great and all, but uh, being ma making that the thing that you. But that's what it is, and, and we are learning about the shifts to the right and up and down and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's valuable. Now, if we I mean if we, if we wanted to use the shifts, then we could say, well, I know that uh, the, the basic graph of this would be for y equals 4 to the x. That's going to go through 0, 1, and 1, 4, and negative 1, 1, fourth. So I know that the 4 to the x graph is going to look like this. So if I have 4 to the x minus 2 plus 1, I know it's going to shift to the right 2 and up 1. So Shift it to the right, to the right, to the right, to uh, one, two, and up one. And my graphs aren't perfect, but that's how we can get from the purple graph to the red graph. It's going to move to the right two and up one. Just like this guy moved to the right two and a five. Um, are there any things to ask or any things to add to all of this discussion about graphing an exponential function? Yes or no? Yeah. We're good? All right. Next time I ask this question or a question like it, no problem. Is that what it means? That there's no questions and nothing to add? Next time I ask this, it's going to be... Same thing here, we're going to plug something in for x, get something out for y, that's going to be a point, plot the point on the graph. Plug something in here for x. Uh, oh, and my base got lost because there were separate things. This is log base. I'm going to plug some stuff in there. Why not start with one? Because uh, we've done that before. One. Right, so I'm going to plug in that log base four. One plus two. That's log base four. 
4 of 3. What's log base 4 of 3? Or what does it mean, log base 4 of 3? Kevin, what does it mean when I ask you log base 4 of 3? What are you looking for? Close, not quite. Riley? Four raised to the what gives you three? Yeah. So go ahead, Riley. I've said the same thing, right? Four raised to the what is three. So you can have us close, but it's not times itself four times it's four times itself some number of time. Well, okay, so four, how many times did you multiply four by itself to get three? Do you know? No. No. Like less than one time? Yeah, kind of a weird, huh? Nothing. Well, at point six. Point seven nine is that a guess or? Point seven nine four. So, what you say? Point seven nine. Point seven nine. All right. Point seven nine. Who's gonna know that just offhand? The answer is weirdos. Okay, <laughs> only weirdos would know that. So, do you think one was a good choice? No, it's a, it's a perfectly uh, legal and, uh, and valid choice, but maybe not the easiest one, right? Because we don't want to take four some power and try to get three. It'd be easier to get what? Four. It'd be easier to get four, right? That's log base four of four. That would be what we need to put in for x. Two. two. We need to plug two in for x. Just figure it out. If we plug in two, we'll get log base four of four. What's log base four of four? What? One. One. Y is one when x is two. Now we're done with two. One. So what would be another number that would be easy to have inside of the parentheses? No, inside, like this number right here, taking log base 4 of what would be easy? 16. 16. So then we would need 14. When we add 2, we'll get 16. So 14 would be a good choice for x. Because what's log base 4 of 16? Well, 4 to something is 16. 4 to the what? The 2. So we get uh, y of 2. Now, 14 is kind of big. 14 is kind of getting out there. So if we keep getting going past there, it's just going to get bigger. So maybe we'll, let's come back. back. All right. Back up. Not, not 16. We don't plug 14 in there. 14's getting kind of big. What would be another number that would be easy? Log base 4 of what? Of 2. Okay. So if we want 2, what would we have to plug in for x? 0 and 0 for x. So what's log base 4? Log base 4 of 2, meaning 4 to something is 2. What power would you use? 4 to the 1 is 2. 1 half. Remember, 4 to the 1 half just means the square root of 4, which is 2. So this should be 1 half. Right, uh, 0, if you put in 0. Plus two is two. Log base four of two is one half. So this is four to the one half. The square root of four is two. Okay. Two is good. What else would you get in here? What's that? Eight.
Um, before to the Help us see this. Uh, the three halves. Let's rewrite that. We we can do this. What's four to the one half? Two. Is the square root of four? Square root of four is two. And what's two to the third? It's eight. So yeah, three halves or one point five works. So how do we go again? Eight there. So we have to put in for x to get eight. Put in a six. So we put in the six, we get three halves. Okay, fine. What about somebody said one? Yeah. One would be good because it was log base four of one. Zero. Zero. So how would I get a one here? What do I put in for x? Negative one. Negative one plus two is one. Log base four of one is zero. Put in a negative one. And get out. Zero. So we got lots of points here. Let's plot all these uh, lots of points that we have. Uh, two, one. Fourteen, two. Zero, one half. Six and three halves. Yeah, and negative one zero. Um, can I put negative two in for x? Log base 5 of 0 means 4 to the something equals 0. Four, what power would you have to raise 4 to to get 0? You can't. Because essentially you're multiplying 4 by itself some number of times. 4 squared, of course, is not 0. 4 to the third is not 0. 4 to the fourth, that just keeps getting bigger. 4 to the 0 seems like our best candidate, but that's 1. Anything to the 0 is 1. 4 to the negative number, so that's just like 4 to the negative three, that just means one-fourth to the third. You just flip it over and raise it to the third. That's not zero. It's small, but it's not zero. So can we put negative two in there? Nope. Could we get really close to negative two? Sure, can we put in negative 1.9999? As long as what's in here is positive, that's fine. It's just got to be positive. So we've just said something about x, which means we're stating something about the domain. x always has to be bigger than 2. Bigger than 2 or negative 2? Bigger than negative 2. Yeah. So on the graph, I could put this line at negative 2, x is negative 2, to say, don't go over there. X can't be that value. That's no good. Okay. Uh, so it seems like my graph is not great. So there's that. There. And uh, well, we know about logarithmic graphs. We know that it gets closer and closer and closer to that vertical line. Now that we're crossing it, our graph of a logarithmic function. If we look at uh, my table that I like to draw, it's going to help us understand why we get this shift to the left too, like this is exactly the same graph as log base 4 of x, but it's moved to the left too. Why is that? Because 
There are always, uh, on all these graphs, there are like these key points that we like to find. Like, what are the values that we like to have inside the parentheses here? We like to take a log base four of things that we can raise four to some number and get, right? So what's the number that we like to see inside the parentheses there? Log base four of <coughs> what? Four of what? Two. Two. Four. Two. Two's not bad, but two kind of you know I have to get a fraction power to get two. Four. If we do four, log base four of four. What's log base four of four? One. Uh, what's another one that it turns out to be easy? Sixteen. Sixteen. 16 in there, you got log base 4 of 16 is just 2. What else? 64, now we're getting so big that it'd be hard to graph. But yes, yeah, 64. Uh, 1 is good. You put a 1 there with log base 4 of 1. Log base 4 of 1? Oh. Zero. <coughs> Log base anything of one is zero. So we'd like to see one show up in there. How about log base four of one fourth? What's that? What's the exponent for four that gives you one fourth? Negative one. Negative one. Four to the negative one is one. I like to see one fourth. So okay, the, like there are some key points, mainly four, one, and one fourth. Those are the ones we like to see. We like to see one in there, that's easy, four is easy, and the reciprocal of that is also simple to do, giving us a good variety of points to help us graph this thing. This is what explains why we get a shift to the left too, because what does x have to be to get four? Two. It has to be two. Not four, I'm oh, sorry, not four, but two, two less than four. And what does it have to be so that we get 16? 14. 14, what does it have to be so that we get one? Negative one. Negative one, what does it have to be so that we get one fourth? One. Minus. 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 Negative one. Negative one and one fourth? Three fourths. Three fourths. Negative one and three fourths. Negative one and three fourths and negative one. <coughs> so there's our shift to the left too. We've got to pick x values that are two less than normal to get the same graph, or to get the same uh, y values, simple y values that are easier to deal with. We're gonna put some money in, twenty-five thousand dollars. Giving that percentage rates compounded every other month. What? What about that compounded every other month? What does that tell us? What about? What does that tell us? What? <coughs> about six times per year. Six times per year. It's gonna compound six times per year. And since it's compounding, not annually, and it's not compounding continuously. We know what formula we're supposed to use, right? At least we know what formula we're supposed to use. What formula are we supposed to use? So P is the initial amount, that's 25,000. One plus R, which is 0 
over <coughs> how many times per year? Six, six times per year. <coughs> okay, pause. I'm pausing my writing down of the formula real quick. <coughs> Um, so there's a 3.29% up there. Like, how often do you get 3.29% of your money back to you? <coughs> do you get 3.29% six times over? Like every two months you get 3.29%? <coughs> no. Every other month. Not quite. It's what? Every other month. No, I just said the same. That's the same thing. <laughs> no, we're not getting 3.29% every other month. 3.29%, when they, when they give you a, a bank account or whatever, and they tell you percentage, that percentage is based on yearly percentage. Right? An annual percentage rate. 1.6%. APR. What's that? 1.6%. One sixth of that percentage is what you get every other month. So for the entire year, if we were just going to do all the whole year all at once, we would just do 1.0329, and we would just do all at once, all at the end of the year. But every other month, we're going to do, we're, we're going to add on money uh, every two months, six times per year. But it would be crazy of the bank to give you 3.29% six times in one year when they want to just give it to you one time in one year. Right? So they want to give you the equivalent but they want to do it in two month blocks. Like every other month they want to do it. Okay. So let's take 0 0.0329 divided by six. What percentage is that? 0.5%, so half a percent. So you're getting half a percent every what? Every, every other, other month. month. Every other month, every two months. Every other month. So, Put your money in there January 1st, come February, whatever it is, if it's a leap year or not, probably the 28th, February 28th, you get half a percent of your money added on to your 25,000. Now we're just gonna take uh, one plus that number. We're gonna take 1.005, that's one, uh, somewhere. that's 105. 100 percent or half percent. 100 and half percent. That's hard to say. Um, and we're going to do what with that? If I want to know what, like half percent more of 25,000 is? Multiply by 25,000 times this number. We'll give you 25,000 plus half a percent of 25,000. <coughs> half a percent of 25,000. So I multiply this by 25,000. I now have $25,137.08. Okay. So when do I have this much money? After two months. After two months. November 28th, I have this much money. Okay. Um, I'll multiply this by 1.0054. I'll have $25,274.92. When will I have this much money? After four months. After four months. Right? First two months, January, February, then another two months, March, April, at the end of April, I'll have this much money. And if I want to do this again, I'll take this and I'll multiply it again. So I'll just hit enter. It'll just do exactly the same thing again. Uh, $25,413.51. After when? six months. At the end of six months, the end of June, I'll have that much money. Does that make sense? So we get this little bit of that 3.29% every two months. We get a sixth of it here, we get a sixth of that for another two months, a sixth of that percent of that after another two months, and after another two months, and another two months, and another two months. So what we're really doing is taking 25,000 times this, that'll be my 25,137. And I'm gonna take this new amount, that's 25,137, and multiply it by one plus one, two, three, two, nine, over six, again, and again, and again, and again, for however many months, or how, however many every other month. 
for however many two month blocks go by. How many months does this happen for? Or how many two month blocks does this happen for? Every other month. What's that? 45 years. 45 mm -hmm. years worth of <laughs> two every other month. So 270. We, it happens for 45 years. And every one of those 45 years, this happens six times. That's how many every other months there are in 45 years. <coughs> Multiply this uh, by itself 270 times. Multiply that by 25,000. Okay. 25,000 times 1 plus 0.3. Divided by 6. Multiply by that, multiply by that over and over and over and over. 270 times. Here's what I want you to be careful of. If instead of finding 270, you're going to raise it to the 45 times 6, use parentheses. If you don't use parentheses and you just raise it to the 45 and then you put times 6, it's going to raise it to the 45. That's the only thing that will be in the exponent. And then it'll multiply that by 6. It'll make your answer not correct. So 109,435 and 9 cents. to use this formula when we are compounding multiple times per year, but not continuously. <coughs> getting the exponent. to a power and get it to not be one third good. So we raise it to a negative, to a negative. Okay, well when we, when we get done doing that, negative question mark, we'll have three to the positive question mark, and that will give us 81. So what does that have to be? Three to the what? To the fourth. Three times three times three times three. Nine times nine. So this needs to be four, so this needs to be negative four. So this is Yeah. <laughs> 
These are all properties of exponents that I can use. <coughs> yeah. So we got we got log base four of this thing. Is this a, uh, a product? Is this a quotient? Is this a raised to a power? Uh, it's a quotient. It's a thing divided by another thing. A thing divided by another thing. So I can take the uh, the top thing, the numerator, take the log of that minus the log of the denominator. Yeah. Log base b of the numerator minus log not b four log base four log base four of three y. Okay. But this what's this? They're being multiplied, so they're being multiplied, so I can use this property on it. So this can be rewritten, just this part, can be rewritten as log base 4 of 3 plus log base 4 of y. Is this the same as this? Yes, it is. And this is being subtracted, so this whole thing needs to be subtracted. That thing. When I expand it out, the whole thing needs to be subtracted, which means that, that negative needs to get distributed to the most of those things. And then this is still log base four. <coughs> yeah. And I can rewrite this by distributing the negative to both of those things. I have minus log base four of three minus log base four of five. Yeah. <coughs> So that's expanding, that's separating them, and now we condense, we're going to put them back together. You might be tempted with all these additions to start putting things together with multiplication. Pay attention, pay close attention here. This property that you would be using, look, there's, there's nothing in front of the logarithm. This property tells you nothing about the numbers that are in front of the log. So we can't use that yet. There needs to be like a one in front of the log there's not. So we need to get it to be that way first. Can we do that? Can we, can we do something with this number that's in front of the log? According to this property, yes I can. I can take this and put it out here. So, the M is <coughs> so I can rewrite this as what? Log base 4 of 2 to the 5th power. Plus log base 4 of x to the 7th Plus log base 4 of y to the 4th power. And now let's just work it from left to right. From left to right. So we got this logarithm plus this logarithm. That's this property. Log plus log. So what's 2 to the 5th? So 32 is we're adding, so we're going to multiply it by this, x to the 7th, plus log base 4 of y to the 4th. And again, we're adding, so we'll take this thing and multiply it by this thing. Log base 4 of 32, x to the 7th, y to the 4th. Okay. A 
bass, you're a little bit fuzzy, flabby, muddy, whatever on this. Let's take a simple example. E to the to the x is seven. So I'm trying to figure out what exponent of e I need to use to get seven. So two point seven one eight two eight one eight two eight, right? That's e. Raised to some power is seven. Well, definitely that's possible, but I have no idea what that number x should be. But this is just a, another way to write the information in a logarithmic equation. I could be write this in logarithmic form. Log base of what? E. E, because E is the thing being raised to the exponent. Of seven. Of seven, because seven is the number we want to get when we raise it to an exponent. X. Right. Log base E of seven equals X. Now that's it's still the same question. It's written differently though. I I still don't know what exponent I need to give to E to make it to make it into seven. <coughs> but is there a friend of yours who does know? Yes. A friend of the calculator. Now, where's log base e? It's what? It's that guy, natural log. The log that is natural. The natural log of 7, that means you're asking the calculator, will you please tell me the exponent for e that gives you 7? It says that that exponent is 1.29 for 6. 1.9 mm -hmm. Or it's about Take e and raise it to the power 1.946. Is that going to give me seven? No. Why not? Not exactly. Not exactly. Yes, exactly. So it's exactly right that it's not exact. But it should be close. It is quite close. 0.0006. Well, that's a nice easy example. If I e to some power equals a number, I can just rewrite it using logarithms. Log base e of that thing equals the exponent. Can I do that here? Yeah? Yeah? Right now, or should I do something quicker? Um, subtract 2. e to the x plus 5 equals 25. This is almost just like e to the x equals 25. It's almost exactly the same thing as that. Yeah. x plus 5, right? It seems OK. How do we rewrite this using logarithms? Uh, e log base e. Okay, natural log. Uh, uh, right. We can find a calculator, get our calculator to tell us that, then we can do uh, how do we find x? What's that? Add 5 to the natural log of 25? Subtract. Subtract. Subtract 5 to both sides to get x by itself. So here's a calculator. Natural log 25. Close that parentheses. Minus 5. Negative 1.781. What's that? No, because we, when we have like the natural log of 25 minus 5, like when I find the exponent for e that gives me 25, and then subtract 5 from it, it's not the same thing as taking the natural log of 20. Because uh, 20. Right? that's the exponent of e that gives me 20. Those aren't the same. If I go to my calculator and I try it out, there's log base 25 minus 5, and here is log base e of 20. Not the same.
the show. Oh, okay. I love that show. That's one to go on the first lane. That's two. The rockets hardly. Uh, Born in middle and mutual. I know all of them. Chandler's middle name is Lenuria. Uh, 32. <coughs> Natural log, uh, 8. X, uh, third, equals 3. And the natural log of 8 plus the natural log of X. So here's the first thing that I want to. to or, or, or did it. It didn't even show anything. What did they do wrong? Did I read that at all? Oh, oh. Oh. oh, okay. So they, they took this and then expanded it. Uh, well, what they did exactly, I don't know. Let's, let's do it correctly and then we'll kind of compare and see what they do. So we've got to keep in mind these these properties of logarithms, okay? If I'm gonna expand them, I, they need to look exactly like one of these, all right? So let's go here. Um, well, what do we have here? Is this eight to the third? Does this eight have an exponent of three? No, only the x does. So what do we have, do we have a quotient? Is this a thing divided by another thing? No, no. no. it's multiplied. It's multiplied. What's being multiplied together? Eight and x to the third. So the natural log of eight plus the natural log of x to the third. In fact, I, mean, I could do like natural log of four plus natural log of two. That would be silly. Okay, let's do it. Leave it like that. Here we have the natural log of x to the third. Natural log of eight plus. We got the exponent there, we got the uh, power property. So this person probably did this in a couple of steps. Saw the exponent, brought the exponent down. Three times the natural log of eight x. Wrong. And then probably just said, oh, that's something times something. So three times the natural log of eight plus the natural log of would also be wrong. This was wrong, and this is wrong even if this was right. Because the natural log of 8x can be written as the natural log of 8 plus the natural log of x, which means that the whole thing would have to be multiplied by 3. Doubly wrong. Doubly wrong. <laughs> Water drinking contest. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Thirty two, first question. Twenty six. Twenty six. <laughs> Log of ten X to the third expand. <laughs> This almost exactly. It is almost exactly. Almost. There's some some differences uh, between this and the one we just did. <coughs> so we have ten times x to the third. So we can say this before log of ten plus log of x to the third. This is x to the third. This can come down here. So plus three log x. What's the base of this log? One. What is log base 10 of 10? One. one. 10 to the 1 is 10. What am I doing? One. 1 plus 3 log x. There we go. It's expanded and it's simplified. I'll change the now and show. Any other questions? <coughs> Solve all that equation is real good.
two natural logs equal to each other, then x plus 7, that thing, must be equal to that thing. And I will continue solving it, because uh, you can solve it. Is that right in the right. So then, what about... Let's look at 27. Well, let's look at 25. Log base 5 of 3x plus 9 in parentheses equals 2. <coughs> Solving logarithmic and exponential function or equations um, is about really rewriting them so that the x isn't trapped inside the parentheses anymore. So it's in logarithmic form, it's in the parentheses of the log, so can we rewrite this in a logarithmic form? So there's like no multiplication either, so no of the properties works. The addition is inside the log, so there's no property for that. But remember, this is saying 5 to the second power is 3x plus 9. You can solve that. 5 squared is 25, so 9, 16, divided by 3, 16. where if we have log base this of, of that thing equals a number, then we can just take 5 of that number equals the parentheses. But it's not, it's not one logarithm. Can we put these together into one logarithm? Yeah. It's supposed to be 12. It's what? Oh. Not 15. So we're adding the two logarithms together, so what do we do with these two? Multiply. Log base 2 of negative x times x plus 12 equals y. Negative x squared minus 12x equals 5. Now it is a single logarithm equals 5. So how would I rewrite this in exponential form? Two to the fifth power should give me negative x squared. And it's a, what kind of an equation? I'll get x squared plus 12x plus 32 equals 0. Factor, uh, 0, solve x, and don't make it. Oh, it's disgusting. 